Hi everyone, this is Mr. West. Today we're doing a Khan Academy tutorial on identifying outliers. So this is related to the five number summary, uh, median, min, Q1, Q3, and the max. And I'm gonna show you how do we know we have an outlier in our data. There, there is a way we quantify it. Um, there's a cutoff point and we're gonna talk about it. So I'm gonna give a quick summary here. The sum and leaf, uh, the stem and leaf plot shows the number of items in each of the 12 collections in a museum. So then you have all this data here, and actually stem and leaf plot is one of my least favorite uh, ways to organize data. And then it says key, two to six, or two six, okay, it, okay this is just talking about how to read a, a stem and leaf plot. So the two and the six, that represents 26. And then, uh, for example, if you have, I'm gonna talk about this chart up in the right in a second. If you have, um, it's not writing. If you have one and three, that represents 13. And then one and two represents 12. Okay, that's just a kind of a goofy way. And here's the, the main thing. This is what we need. And it already calculates it for us, which makes our lives a lot easier. And what we can do here is we can use this to create what's called a box plot. Now, the box plot, I'm describing this visually because I think it's a lot easier. The box plot is a way that we can display our min, our max. And I didn't label those, but um, this would be our min. This would be our max. Okay, the furthest number to the right. And then we have Q1, Q3 at the edges of the box and the median's the line in the middle. Okay, now, what is this talking about with this IQR rule? This is how we determine if something's an outlier, if it doesn't fit in with the data mathematically, okay? And the way we do that is first we have to find what's called the IQR, and that is the interquartile range. Essentially, we just take the difference between Q3 and Q1. So in this case, it's fairly simple. We do 13 minus 6, and it gives us those numbers. So our, our IQR is 7. That means from Q1 to Q3, there's seven data, or excuse me, the, the range of data goes seven numbers deep. The values go um, seven in their range, in their span, okay? Now, um, how do we use this IQR rule? What we, rule, we multiply this number, okay, times 1.5. And when I do that, I get, I'll put the equal sign down here actually. So I multiply this by 1.5, I'm gonna rewrite this, it's a little unorganized and I get 10.5. This is my IQR rule to see if it's an outlier. Now, what does this mean? That means from the yellow box, okay, this is the most confusing part. From the yellow box, I can go 10 units, 10.5 units to the right, and I can go 10.5 units to the left and have it still be within the data. So if it's asking me how many high outliers that there are, what I can do is I can take my Q3, Okay, that's the, the edge of the box, essentially. My Q3, and I add the 1.5 times the IQR. This will tell me my upper limit. Okay, but I like just thinking about it. I think it's easier than memorizing this formula. Never just more memorize, memorize a formula. I think that goes without saying. But So in this case, my, my upper limit is 13. And I know I can go, as I demonstrated up here, I can go 10.5 in either direction. So from my Q3, I can go 10.5 up or positive to the right, however you want to say it. And when I add those two things, I get 23.5, okay? That is the max number I can go up to. So if it's asking me how many are outside of that, well, look, I have 26 right there, conveniently circled for me, and 39. Those two numbers are outside of that outside of this 23.5, okay? They're they're bigger than that. So they're outside the acceptable range for data. Therefore, there's two, two uh, data outliers in this little set, okay? So that's how we do that. All right, here we go, another one. I'm just gonna go ahead and skip. Sorry, if you want context, you guys can pause. Okay, done pausing. Now we're gonna go ahead and just get to the math. So we have min, Q1, median, Q3, max, and we're trying to find the low outliers, okay? We already talked about the high outliers. So here was our box plot. This was our IQR, and we know that our critical points are the Q1 and Q3. Well, that would actually look pretty cool. Now, we wanna be able to see, okay, how far can we go to the left of Q1 and how far can we go to the right of Q3? This time, we're only interested in how far to the left of Q1 can we go because we're looking for low outliers. Well, we do the same thing. First thing we need, we need the IQR. 
Okay, IQR is Q3 minus Q1. So I'm doing 73.5 minus 64.5. So I'm going to just, uh, let's see, that's what, 9? I'm pretty sure it's 9. Yeah, so it's 9. Now I need to multiply this by 1.5. Well, I know half of 9 is 4.5, so it's going to be 13.5. I'm kind of scared <laughs> to not do it on a calculator, but I'm going to trust myself here. 13.5 is the distance I can go from Q1. So I know I can go 13.5 in that direction. So my Q3 is 64.5. Okay. So 64.5, and I'm going to subtract 13.5. That'll tell me what's the smallest number I can have and have it still fit in the data. And that number is... What is that? That takes me down to 64, 61, 51. So 51 is the smallest number I can have. So look here. I need to see what numbers are smaller than 51. And it looks like we have a 57. That's not small enough. A 50. Okay. I try to make it that cool. A 50 is small enough. Okay. So that's outside of our data. So 50 is outside of the data. That's one answer outside of the data. We'll check it. There we go. Okay, each one of these, I guess we're doing the same thing. This one's another low outlier. Okay, again, when we have a low outlier, here's our kind of cutoff. Well, not our cutoff, that's our Q1. And we want to know how far to the left of Q1 we can go. As a reminder, we start with the IQR, Q3 minus Q1. So that's 4. We have 17 minus 13, and that's 4. That's nice and easy. I need to multiply this by 1.5. That gives me my range, how far I can go from my Q1. So if I do that, that's 6. So how do I find the low number where I'm going to take my Q1? And I'm going to subtract that number here, and that's 6. My Q1 we knew is 13. I subtract 6. I don't know why I'm changing colors so much. And that gives me 7. So 7 is the lowest number. This is my lower limit. Okay, so 7 is my lower limit. Let's take a look at our data. What numbers are below 7? The following dot plot shows the centuries during which the 11 castles, each dot okay, represents the different castles. Um, there's no numbers outside of our lower limit. So, yeah, there's no outliers. Most of the data, and it seems about right, look, all the data is grouped in right here. There's nothing like out here that's a little extreme. Okay, so there's zero low outliers. Okay, very good. Now we're on to the last one. We're doing high outliers again. So we're looking at our Q3. That's our important one there. First thing we do, though, is IQR. I'm going to write a little bit less this time. And that's 40 minus 24, so it's 16. If I multiply that by 1.5, that's going to tell me how far I can go above Q3 and have it still fit within the data. So I do 16 times 1.5. Well, I know half of 16 is 8, so that's going to give me to 24. 24. That means I can go 24 units from 40. So I know that gives me a max option. My max, whoops, I'm going to call it my upper limit. I have an eraser and I just scratch it out. What about that? 64. So my upper limit is 64. So I'm going to take a look here. Any numbers outside of 64? There are. And okay, there's a bunch. As you can see from the data here, there's all these numbers grouped right here. And then our cutoff would have been 64, which is in that row. Notice how there's 75, 77, and 138. That's how you read um, the stem and leaf plot. So there's three numbers that are outliers, high outliers for this problem, and that's it. So hopefully you found this video helpful on what is an outlier and how to calculate it. It's a pretty simple process once you have the five number summary. If you need help with having, uh, you know, understand the five number summary, leave a comment. I can make another video. I think I have some other videos on it, but maybe not yet. It's been, I make a lot of videos. It's over almost 700. So um, leave a comment if you need anything. I can make a video anytime. And I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.